you guys have only ever borrowed that $20,000 from your parents and now you've built a multi-billion dollar a year annual revenue company. Um, that's highly unusual. Can you talk us through how that is possible, even from a cash flow perspective or even a scale perspective? Because all those companies, you know, Koala, Harry's, like all these companies, they've all raised outside funding and venture to help with cash flow, to help with uh, scale customer acquisition. So can you talk us through how is that possible, what you've done? Yeah, even Harry's, if you look at Harry's, I think they've raised, what, $600 million? Maybe more could be wrong there, but it's an awful lot of money because they were all D2C and the cost of customer acquisition was so high. And to be honest, I don't know how they spend all that money. I have no idea where it all goes is my honest question to that. Like, you know, this whole like raising capital and raising series A, B, C, D, F, Z to me is like a little bit archaic. I look at businesses like Oatly and all the hype around Oatly and, and, and the market cap on Oatly. For every dollar that Oatly ships, it loses a dollar 42. It works on 15% gross margins. To me, FMCG is different to, you know, these tech multiples and it just puzzles me, you know, how these companies operate like this and, and how they're valued so highly. Obviously that a lot of them have recorrected through this period um, or this last sort of six months. Um, but to answer your question, we, we started and we lived literally off nothing for seven years. So even when we were making tens of millions of dollars a year, we still lived on like, like literally dollars a week. And our business structure is set up very differently. So we use the scale, big retail, Walmart, Target, Tesco, Carrefour, and we only ship in toys. To this day, we still ship FOB. So in the early days, we had our retailers paying 30% deposits to us, and then they would pick up the goods from us directly at factory or at port, and then they would pay the balance. And so it meant that our retailers were effectively like funding a lot of the goods. We were very low risk. And still to this day in our toy business, we actually don't ship and hold and pay for our own domestic inventory. We run a very lean inventory model. And actually in the whole toy market, this was very disruptive. All our competitors still ship uh, domestically um, all around the world. And they put it into their own DCs in country and distribute to retailers from there. We don't do that um, still to this day. And so we were able to, in the early days, get our first big deal where we ended up making sort of a million dollars was on this David Beckham product with Walmart. We came out, we made a million dollars. We really looked after that million dollars and that helped us fund to the next level and the next level. We keep funding you know, our production. And so it's that same as compounding improvement. It's amazing how fast compounding goes. It's amazing. If you take like, I think it's like 32 numbers and you compound them, you know, suddenly you've got a huge, huge, huge number. And so it's the same thing here. We really, even when we were making lots of money, we still lived off nothing. We still spent nothing. And we still had this cognitive approach of how do we build our business in a, in, to make profit. So even when we had toys that weren't really selling through at retail and we were bad at making toys, we would still hustle to sell enough of them to enough countries, to enough big retailers that would pay deposits and ship them FOB that would still make profit. And then we'd do another product and do the same thing. So eventually when we got good at making product and we were getting reorders, um, and we were becoming more successful, we were just becoming more and more and more profitable, um, essentially. And that compounding effect has allowed us to, to grow. Um, even if you take, say, our diaper business, um, you know, we started that with, with basically nothing three years ago. That business, you know, this year, it will do, you know, over $200 million um, from a standing start three years ago. And literally to build that brand was less than a few hundred thousand dollars. Um, of course, we took money from Zuru to help fund um, production runs um, and to like to fund the order growth. Um, but outside of that, it's, it's very lean. Hey, Founder Fam, we hope that you loved that clip. If you did, you can click through right here to watch the full interview. You don't want to miss this one. See you there.